Tonight's mailbag opening is preceded by Brasserie La Shop's Night Owl Shop Stout. Brewed and packed in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Yes, Winnipeg does have a fairly substantial French population, despite our distance from where you'd expect the French population to be in Canada. Mmm, nice dark roasty malt. The mail. What do we have here? We have repair tool, it says. Oh, just randomly grabbed my old knife. I haven't used this thing in mailbags in years. It's a spudger. Well, um, as you may recall from a few mailbags back, I have been stocking up on a random assortment of spudgers just to see what I can find, what are good ones, what are not worth my effort. And this, I think, may be one of the last ones to come in. Opening spudger pry tool for mobile phones, iPod, iPhone, tablet repair, steel metal. Got this for the princely sum of $1.25 Canadian. And it looks like it was free shipping back then. Currently it's got a buck twenty-six Canadian shipping on it, but I'm pretty sure it was free shipping back then. And I got it from uh, this guy here. Uh, if you feel like trying to pronounce it, go ahead. I ain't gonna. Doesn't say very much about it down here. It claims that it's stainless steel and springy. Uh, 123 millimeters by 20 by 0.3 millimeters. Okay, it's a standard spudger. Next in is, what does it say? Mechanical pencil leads. Okay. Lots of bubble pack in there. Yes, it does look like a mechanical pencil. Okay. Ah, and it uses the thicker lids. Kind of like drafting pencils. Oh, and it's got the ergonomic little triangle shape there. And a little thing to remind you what type of lid it's got in it. That's interesting. So you can just rotate that around. So you can remember what lid you had in it. And it was set to 2B when I got it. Pocket clip and whatnot, and a little, I'm pretty sure that's a sharpener back there. And also in the package, a bunch of replacement mechanical pencil leads. Are these various different thicknesses? I'm not sure, but they are 2 millimeter by 90 millimeter. So I couldn't find the actual listing because it has been removed by eBay. And so has the user. Hmm. So by searching with the title from the original one, I uh, was able to find something similar. So I'll link you to this search. Anyway, as you can see, it cost me a whole dollar thirty-five US. I don't know. I assume it had free or cheap shipping on it at the time, but whatever. That doesn't matter, because more reputable sellers seem to be selling the same thing for, you know, seven dollars and up plus shipping. So many decades ago, back in high school, I took a drafting course. I still have my pencils from back then. These are the finest of Stadler, uh, Mars Stadler, made in Germany. And I have an assortment of different lead types that I bought at a stationery store back when those existed. I thought it would be uh, kind of neat, especially for only a couple of bucks, to uh, see what a modern one looks like. Next in, we have, well, we don't know what it is, because as often seems to happen, this one was reshipped through the Canadian warehouse. It's got some weight in it, though. Thump. We have something with wires on it, and, oh, two pairs of these cheap cutters that uh, everybody likes these days. Not that they're a high-quality product, but they are certainly... They do the job and they are really inexpensive. And I've already got a set on the go and an older set that uh, finally gave up the ghost. Don't know whether you can see, but I cut something wrong and the jaws don't meet anymore. Plus there's nicks out of them and stuff. So they're cheap and they don't last forever, but they're cheap enough to be disposable. So I figured when I saw a couple of them on a good deal, I grabbed them. 
Two trees, two piece trimming side cutter wire cutters model abrasives flush cut plier DIY. Six dollars and ninety nine cents for the pair of them with sixty three whole American cents for shipping. And for that price, why not order a couple? And what is this? It has a wire and looks like it has a micro switch. Oh, I think I know what that is. I think it is a filament runout sensor for a 3D printer. Yeah, that filament pushes down on the little micro switch in there. Okay, so there I'm on the terminals and as I pull and when I run out of filament, yeah, okay. So the point of that, uh, if you aren't familiar, is to tell your printer to pause when it runs out of filament so that uh, you don't basically get a half finished print and a whole bunch of nothing and your file is finished and you don't know where to go back to it. It pauses right at the exact spot that it runs out of filament. So you can come back later and uh, return, replace the filament and carry on as if nothing bad had ever happened. BQ filament break detection module with one meter cable, 1.75 millimeter filament, material exhaust detector for Impersoa, 3D extruder control board, uh, black or other colors. I got the transparent one, uh, $4.98 American with free shipping. Not too much to say about it that we didn't already know. Three volts to five volts, uh, whatever. It's just a switch. There's nothing magical in there. And there it is, uh, filament entrance and exit, uh, mounting holes, the detection interface for your cable. Why does it want VCC on there? VCC and ground. Oh, maybe because it just, the signal switches between VCC and ground depending on whether it's active or or not okay next in we have sealer it says um okay well a spring is part of it those parts are part of it um so it takes batteries inside of it Whatever that is, is part of it. Oh, wow. And it looks like it is doing heat sealing on the edge of a chip bag or something. So that's what it is, just for resealing, heat sealing on stuff like that. But it seems to have exploded in the mail. I'm guessing that that is the little heating element in between there. The little piece of very slippery fiber tape on the top. And there's a little pressure pad with a mating kind of very slippery little piece of, uh, I'm assuming heat resistant, uh, slippery pad stuff. Uh, so that would probably go on there and that goes underneath there. I was planning on doing a teardown of this thing when I ordered it, but I guess I don't have to because it's sort of torn itself down and that just presses in there. That little piece flips up it calls itself a safety guard that is the battery door where the hell's that spring come from oh maybe it goes behind that little pad there as falling apart as it was i wasn't expecting it to be this hard to get back apart again okay that spring i think goes behind that block and into there yeah that's what it is now we'll lock that back down again. Sure. The battery door. Mini portable bag clips. Home electric heat sealing machine. Packing plastic bag. I got this at auction for $2.84 Canadian. And it's possible that I overpaid for it. Um, got it from nilanga.s. Uh, sure, whatever. Uh, free shipping, of course. Anyway, there's what it does. Oh, looks like it works on various different types of bags. I guess basically any bag that's a thermal plastic it should work on. This is not exactly the same as the one that I got. Hmm. And of course, 
it doesn't show it all exploded like mine was. So let's just try this thing here. Toss a couple of batteries in and Oh yeah, there's some heat, okay. This is kind of an unfortunate little design to get the batteries and you have to snap that guy right off. But let's, uh, let's take our bag here, give it a slice. I don't know if this is the right kind of plastic for this or not, but we'll just do that for a few seconds. Huh, it is fused back together. Okay, this might actually work. Just hold that and slowly drag it across there. Really slow. Oh, well, would you look at that? It actually does what it says. That's cool. I, I actually didn't expect that to work. And the last one in is another one that was reshipped through the Canadian warehouse. So we have no clues on the outside of the package. There's a lot of bubble pack. Wow. Seriously? That is three micro switches. <laughs> in a yard of bubble pack. Wow. And these claim to be Omron branded. I don't know whether they are or not. Omron is a quality brand if they really are. 5 amp, 250 volt, made in Indonesia. Part number and a CSA. Really? That surprises me. I am not actually expecting them to be that, but Regardless, I'm, I'm also not planning on using them for 250 volts either or 5 amps. They are just good little limit switches and stuff like that. You push the little tiny, really lightweight uh, button in and only a couple of millimeters and it switches over. I think you can see on there is a common and normally open and normally closed. So this is a SPDT, single pole, double throw switch. And I got three of them. So, it looks like I ordered all three of these separately, obviously at auction. I paid six cents for one of them, seven cents for the other, and ooh, a whopping 15 cents for the third one. All, of course, with free shipping. Presumably the seller, uh, Yi Ching 716, paid more for the bubble pack than, than I paid. But uh, I guess that's, uh, that's the risk you take when you list something for ridiculously cheap and free shipping on eBay. You risk that only two people are going to bid on it and one of them's going to, and uh, we're both going to lowball you like this. Well, that was fun as usual. Um, and as often happens, a really wide and random assortment. So the shipping times, these three micro switches took 14 days to get here. The funky little weird bag sealer thing. I just noticed it has a magnet on the back. Um, that took 33 days. The mechanical pencils took 30 days, even though the seller got delisted from eBay for whatever reason. Um, the spudger took 76 days to get here. Wow. I think that's the last of them that I've got coming. I'll have to, uh, check through the listings or I'll just be surprised when another one shows up. Who knows? Uh, 76 days and from Banggood, the pair of cutters and the filament runout sensor took 21 days. Um, as always, links will be down in the description um, I know I've mentioned it before and I've alluded to it down below. They are affiliate links usually, and that doesn't cost you any more that, but that does give me a little bit of a kickback. If you happen to buy any of these things, um, none of this is sponsored. The majority of this is paid for by, uh, well, helpful, helped out with anyways, by generous donations from my Patreons who also helped to keep my beer fridge full, and I sure do appreciate it. Um, thanks to everybody for watching. Um, questions and comments down in the comments section, as usual. 
I'll talk to you later.